I'm Christopher Derwin Levin Sr., a Collider Navigator, and I'm here for you and your business. I'm Amanda Leitner, and welcome to Rochester Rising, where we amplify the stories of Rochester entrepreneurs. Welcome to episode 205 of the podcast today. So as we mentioned last week, we're spending the remainder of our 2020 podcasts introducing you to the newest members of our Collider team, individuals who are serving as what we call ecosystem navigators. So last week, we introduced you to one of these newest team members, Julio Molino. This week, we're going to introduce you to Christopher Derwin Loving Sr. Christopher is focusing his ecosystem navigation efforts primarily in the Black entrepreneurial and small business community here in Rochester, Minnesota. So you may ask, what is an ecosystem navigator and how do they serve the entrepreneurial community? So ecosystem navigators, they're a great, confidential, valuable resource here in Rochester. They're individuals who really understand the journey of being an entrepreneur here in this community. They have very deep ties to the community here in Rochester. And what they do as an ecosystem navigator is they listen to entrepreneurs. They listen to entrepreneurs where they're at. They listen to where they're at on their entrepreneurial journey. And they work to connect entrepreneurs to education, resources, or people that they need most at this point in their journey. So today we're going to hear from Christopher. I'll let him tell you more about himself and why he's passionate about serving as an ecosystem navigator to help to lower barriers to entrepreneurship here in Rochester. So The Ecosystem Navigator Program is a two-year pilot program here in Rochester that has been funded through the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation, a Kansas City-based nonprofit that supports entrepreneurs. So Christopher, who's serving in one of our three Ecosystem Navigator roles here in Rochester, is a native of Chicago, but he moved to Rochester six years ago. Christopher is a dedicated family man. He's also a minister and a sports official, and he's on his own entrepreneurial journey here in the community. He's very dedicated to paying forward his knowledge and experience to help others reach their entrepreneurial goals. I will let Christopher share more about his story very shortly with you, and I encourage you to listen in. And if he is somebody that you want to connect with in the community, definitely encourage you to reach out. You can connect with him directly at his email at chris at collider.mn. That's K-R-I-S at collider.mn. We'll have his email information in our show notes as well. You can find more information about our ecosystem navigators in that program through the Collider website at collider.mn. And again, We will have that information included in our show notes. As you all know by now, Rochester Rising serves as the storytelling arm of Collider. Collider is a Rochester-based nonprofit that supports early-stage entrepreneurs through events, education, space, and storytelling. We put out a new Rochester Rising podcast every Wednesday, talking about entrepreneurship and innovation going on in Rochester, Minnesota, so you can check it out really anywhere you listen in to podcast content, including on our website at rochesterrising.org. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and we put out these podcast episodes on our YouTube channel as well. And you can always check out many of our stories that we have about entrepreneurship on our website at rochesterrising.org to better understand what's going on in the entrepreneurial and small business scene here in Rochester, Minnesota. All right, so now on to today's podcast with Christopher Derwin Loving Sr., an ecosystem navigator with Collider. So my name is Christopher Derwin Loving Sr. I'm originally from Chicago. I've been in Rochester, Minnesota for six years now. I was brought here. uh, I'm part of what I call the 1% of non-Mayo reasons for coming to Rochester. Uh, My father-in-law started a church here um, back in 2014, 
and my wife and I came to support the ministry and to be close to her family. Um, and since being here, I got involved with sports officiating, first with high school basketball, later lacrosse, and then later football. And since then, I've been even more blessed to uh, elevate to college football and college basketball. Um, also here in Rochester, I've been involved with the nonprofit community where I've been a founder of a nonprofit before. I've been a member of the Chamber of Commerce and other networking groups. Um, I've been active in things like uh, the YMCA, uh, Minnesota Rochester Sports, and other uh, organizations that revolve around uh, community, youth, sports, and also some faith-based things. Um, through that, I was connect connected with Amanda, who at the time was with uh, solely with Rochester Rising. And uh, we talked about my nonprofit at that time. And as the years progressed, we stayed in touch. Um, she got involved with Collider and offered me um, an opportunity to work with Collider as a navigator. Um, and in that role, I help entrepreneurs in the Rochester community with um, questions, with just being a listening ear, with being a connector to resources or people. And uh, very passionate about that because as I was that entrepreneur, um, I benefited from the connections and relationships I made. And so I'm excited and very honored to do the same in more of a formal manner. And I look forward to my role as a navigator to help people like myself that maybe aren't from Rochester, they may be in a minority group, they may not uh, be as connected with the community, and uh, hopefully I can be uh, one small part of their success. So um, I would say the first thing, of course, is family. I'm blessed to have um, a wife of seven years, and we have two children. Um, our son is five and our daughter is three. And so we're at a really uh, exciting age with them where they're getting involved with sports and extracurricular. So enjoy definitely seeing them develop academically and with sports and with activities and with just, you know, growing up into their personalities. Uh, my wife is finishing school and she's achieving some different goals as well. So I'm certainly enjoying seeing my family grow and uh be happy, to be quite honest. I uh, also am a man of faith. Um, I'm a minister and a, a Bible teacher. And um, in the past year, we've been doing mostly virtual ministry and teaching and activities. And so I definitely enjoy uh, teaching and um, outreach and um, counseling to an extent, or just really more encouraging people through the word or through prayer. And then lastly, uh, officiating. Uh, I officiate college football, college basketball, and girls lacrosse, high school lacrosse. And certainly love sports. I love more so the camaraderie and the teamwork aspect of officiating. Um, working the games is, is great, but it's more that family aspect where we keep in touch with each other. We care about each other's families. And when we're on the field or court, Pretty much we're the only ones that care about each other and have each other's back. So I would say family, faith, and sports officiating are my three passions and time-consuming things. Um, a navigator to me um, is not a business consultant. It's not um, an attorney. It's not an accountant. It's not a marketing specialist. Um, it's really just a, a connector to those things I mentioned. It's a connector to the business needs and it's a connector to the resources and it's a connector to the questions that may be uh, present. So a navigator is truly uh, somewhat of a, a friend, somewhat of a companion of a business, um, a listening ear. Um, it's just someone that to really assist that business be successful without being a uh, formal or very direct or, or being obligated. Um, none of the people in the Navigator serve are forced to, you know, ask for help or they're not forced to use the connections. They're not forced to use the referrals. 
Um, but we're here to offer what we know and what we have. And so Navigator to me really just is a, is a helper, is a support, um, somewhat of a guide, um, but we're just here to make the entrepreneur's job a little easier and to settle uh, some issues or questions they may have to the best of our ability. Um, I, I believe in the concept of paying it forward. And as myself, as a, as a newer entrepreneur, a young entrepreneur, a minor, uh, minority entrepreneur, I think it's very important that I uh, give back what was given to me, which was a lot of support, a lot of education, uh, a lot of advice, a lot of connecting with other people. And so uh, being in this role um, gives me the opportunity to do the same for others and hopefully more. Uh, now that I'm, I'm older, I've had more experiences, I've learned more, um, now I can give that back to someone that may be in my shoes now or that were in my shoes when I became an entrepreneur and specifically uh, targeting or, or working with the, the black community and black entrepreneur community. Um, I certainly know uh, what they're going through. I've walked in their shoes, I'm walking in their shoes. And so I can relate and I kind of know the pitfalls, I know the struggles, I know the challenges. And so I think it's, it's very um, critical that I don't keep that to myself. So it means a lot to not only be successful personally, but then help others in their success as well. So I'm from Chicago and been in the Rochester community for six years. And to be honest, um, when I first got here, it was a, a very uh, difficult as I really didn't want to leave home. I was very connected, very established there, had a lot of relationships there, had a lot of potential there. And so I, I didn't come into Rochester really with the, the best attitude and the best mindset, um, but was fortunate enough to you know, work in organizations such as Mayo Clinic, was my first employer when I got here, later the YMCA. Um, work with organizations that had a very strong impact and strong uh, reputation in Rochester. So through my um, employment, I was able to kind of learn a little bit about the area and kind of what was available. Um, I then got involved with officiating, so I got involved with the education system to an extent and the sports world. And so I started to kind of see the potential and the, actually the great um, influence Rochester could have, not only on my life and my family, but worldwide. Obviously, Mayo Clinic is a worldwide organization. Um, also, um, just the people that are attracted to this community has, has brought me to a level of diversity I didn't have in Chicago. Um, I mean, honestly, I never really was a quote unquote minority in the neighborhoods I grew up in, the schools I went to. So coming to Rochester was the first time I actually experienced being a, again, quote unquote minority in demographics. But I learned that um, diversity is, is important. And so I'm grateful that although it wasn't a planned move, wasn't necessarily a, a desired move, uh, in my time in Rochester, I've learned a lot about a lot of different people, a lot of different um, organizations, a lot of different needs and causes that I probably wouldn't have. And I'm grateful that Rochester offers a lot of things you can learn and uh, grow from. And then, as I mentioned, pay it forward. So I can take what I've gained here in Rochester, both professionally, educationally, vocationally, and I could use it for my family and others, hopefully. So uh, Rochester has almost a, a, an unlimited, or I'll say a great abundance of resources in every area from education, um, fundraising, extracurricular activities, health I mean, there's a lot available here, but I would say one of the biggest challenges is if you're not from here, it's hard to know what's available. And then the second part is access to it. So maybe you know about it, maybe you've heard of it, but can you access it? Um, do you have the, maybe the, uh, 
education requirement? Do you have the financial requirement? Do you have the time? Do you have the transportation? So although there's a, an abundance here, sometimes it's just unknown to many, especially um, outsiders or younger people or minority groups or people that are outside of the inner circle, maybe you know, um, known families or things of that nature. Um, it's just hard to know what's available and then sometimes it's hard to access. Another quick example is the public transportation system is great if you work downtown, but it's not great if you work outside of the downtown area or if you live outside of a route that goes downtown. It's great if you work first shift, but it's not great if you work on the weekends. So again, it's a good system. It's, it's um, efficient, but only for some. And so things like that are, are challenges and struggles, but I think there are um, challenges that can be overcome, challenges that can be resolved if we acknowledge them and then we do something about it. Um, so in the Navigator program, I'm serving the, the Black community, Black entrepreneur community. And I don't know the exact statistics, but I know we're a small percentage of the population in Rochester. Um, however, um, there's a great impact we can still make. And I've been fortunate to meet several longtime residents, um, business owners, nonprofit leaders in the Black community that have kind of taken me under their wing and mentored me and showed me the ropes and encouraged me in my time, my short time here. And so I'm excited that although I've only been here six years, I don't have a lengthy um, resume or reputation, but what I have established and what I have learned, I'm very much looking forward to sharing that with this community. Um, I'm also not from Rochester. And again, without statistics, I can say most of the black uh, residents are also not from Rochester. Many are from Chicago, like myself, or Minneapolis area, or Detroit, or Milwaukee. And so I can certainly relate to being from a larger city with um, more variety, um, more activities, um, uh, more people that look like us. I know what that feels like. I know it can be. Um, I know it can be overwhelming. I know it can be intimidating sometimes. I know it can kind of deter us from maybe going to that event or or getting involved with that group or meeting with this person that they don't know because of fear or because of just the unknown. And so I look forward to hopefully being that uh, liaison or being that safe space where people can say, I never heard of Collider. I don't know what this Navigator thing is. I don't know all of these resources, but I trust you, Chris, and um, I'll listen and I'll, I'll sit in that meeting with you. I'll get on that Zoom call. I'll get on that phone call with you. And so I'm looking forward to being that connection, that safe connection, that trustworthy, that uh, person that can maybe open the door or, or point a person to the door that maybe they, they otherwise wouldn't have walked through. As much as I want to see others do well and succeed and, and reach goals, uh, I personally also want to be a better entrepreneur, a better business owner, a better leader, a uh, better advocate in the community for my own self, for my own business, my own family. So I'm certainly looking to take advantage of these resources for myself. Um, I've been fortunate to meet great leaders in the community, the business community, legal community, fundraising, um, many sectors where I've connected those people with um, clients and those I, I represent and serve. However, I've also asked questions and sought them out for myself. And so I'm hoping to continue um, almost being, you know, the first uh I don't want to call myself a test dummy, but I, I want to experience the resources personally and then give a firsthand account and say, hey, I had questions on accounting too, or I had questions on legal matters, or I had questions on fundraising also, 
you know, I reached out to so-and-so or I checked out this website. It helped me a great deal. Maybe it can help you too. So I want it to, I want to be, I want this to be a win-win where I learn and grow and develop my business and my leadership and others do the same. And success to me will be um, people truly reaching their goals. Um, everyone becomes an entrepreneur for different reasons. Some is out of necessity. Um, some is out of a passion that someone said, hey, you should, you know, you should sell that or you should offer that as a business. Or for some, it's uh, their second chapter. Maybe they worked a great career, they retired, and they're looking to utilize their talents and their time um, more so than maybe sitting around at home. So success to me is really based on the entrepreneur themselves. Uh, they may want to get rich or they may want to uh, make enough to take care of their family and send their children to, to college. So whatever those goals are, I want to see those goals be reached and hopefully celebrate with that, that individual or with that, that business. And so I, I'm excited. It's always fun to ask those questions of why why did you do this? Why did you start this? Why do you want the help to even make this thing grow? Uh, being an entrepreneur, um, especially a black entrepreneur in a predominantly non-black community um, can be very difficult. It can be scary. But just know that you are capable of achieving great things. Know that you don't have to do it alone. And as a matter of fact, you can't do it alone. So I'm here to be that assistant to you, to be that connector, to be that encourager. I want to be one of your biggest cheerleaders. I want to be one of your biggest supporters. And I may be able to simply do that by just listening to your story. Uh, I'm confident that I have some great experiences, good and bad, that I can share with you. I'm confident that I have contacts and resources that I can guide you to or direct you to or refer you to that may be able to help you as it's helped me and many others that are in our shoes. Uh, don't be discouraged. Certainly don't quit. Use that passion, that talent, that service, that background to not only help yourself, but hopefully help many others. And I hope that I can be a part of your journey. Thanks so much to Christopher for sharing his story with us. This audio was recorded in collaboration with Ambient House Productions, which is a Rochester-based video production company. And we were very grateful to receive a Keep It Local grant from the Rochester Downtown Alliance, which made it possible to do this recording and also produce a video that is based on um, this recording that will be released shortly in 2021. So stay tuned for that to learn more about Christopher and our other ecosystem navigators. And again, if you would like to connect with Christopher, his contact information is in our show notes. You can reach out directly to him at chris at collider.mn. So that is a wrap for us at the podcast today. We want to wish everyone a safe and healthy holiday season, however you are able to celebrate that this year. We'll be here next Wednesday with a brand new episode.